So, loyal viewers, today what we're going to be working on is the Regulation D tier list. Now, Regulation D is still being sort of solved, if that's the good way to put it. Uh, it's, it's in the process of being solved by a lot of players. We don't know what's the best Pokemon, but now we have an idea, and I wanted to play it a little longer before I made a tier list video on it, just so I could have my thoughts, like, really simmer. I didn't want to just give my raw thoughts on everything. Um, I, I think I'm going to skip all the old Pokemon and just rank the new Pokemon, but I'll leave some notes about old Pokemon throughout the video. But yeah, um, the way that we're going to rank this is... S, I have to clarify this at the beginning because people are going to forget um, and be like, what do you mean it's not S tier? It's clearly S tier. Anyways, yeah. Oh, actually, before we get into that, if you guys enjoy this, you know, you're watching on YouTube, leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content and leave your thoughts in the comment section down below about my tier list rankings. And if you don't know, you know, I, I live stream like we are streaming this tier list make maker session live. Uh, so be sure to check that out. Um, my Twitch channel is just Moxie Boosted, but yeah. So S tier is going to be, also I think the music's a little too loud, give me a second. <laughs> and make sure the music's not too loud. All right, so S tier is going to be um, like, how do I explain it? S tier is gonna be like meta defining Pokemon, right? Uh, I'm gonna get rid of A plus, cause I don't like A plus. Um, let's just go ahead and delete that one. Um, a tier is going to be basically Pokemon that, um, common, uh, best in their role, right? That's what it's going to mean. B tier is going to be like off meta pick, but good. C tier is going to be cooking you're cooking <laughs> and d tier is gonna be don't <laughs> however i do need to um i do need to specify that when i say like something's d tier it means that like you can get away with basically anything in pokemon i'm gonna be honest if something has stats you can win with it is my opinion but it's not going to be something that I recommend. So that, that's what I mean by this. So, yeah. See, buddy, thank you so, uh, so much for the resub. All right, let's get into this. Also, yeah, Fresno Regionals is happen happening right now, but I'm so busy that I'm like, whatever. I'm just, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm just going to record my video. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we're going we're gonna to get into this. So, C tiers, you're cooking. You know, I don't really believe in it, but you might be able to do it. All right. Charizard. Um... I'm not going to always look into the stats of these Pokemon because I'm going to get bored of doing that. I'm going to say that right now. But Charizard's kind of interesting. Um, you know, 109 special attack, 100 speed. It has a little bit of a niche in being like a strong, like fire type Pokemon. But it's also competing with like Arcanine, Chiyu and stuff. That's that's going to be a cooking tier for me. Um, and, you know, emphasis on cooking. Um, Charizard, you know, has solar power and stab fire moves. So, Yeah. Uh, Alolan Raichu, I'm actually going to say that's also going to be in cooking. Alolan Raichu is kind of interesting in that it does have that niche in Surge Surfer. Um, however, doubling down on electric types isn't going to be too easy. You could try to go for like, you know, manual electric terrain next to like Iron Bundle, but I don't think that's too good. I think that like Alolan Raichu will have a niche once Tapu Koko exists, but you could pair this with Pincurchin. I think it losing Rising Voltage is the biggest thing against it. Honestly, the fact that nothing in this game has a Rising Voltage is really sad. Um, I actually really want that move to come back. It's, it was a cool move. Uh, but yeah, um, Alolan Raichu, it does have access to like Fake Out and stuff. It does have access to like Psychic. Psychic and Electric isn't the worst coverage, and it does benefit from Terra Typing, but that's that's definitely cooking for me. Doug Trio, Alolan, it's going to be Don't. It just doesn't have the stats to pull off what it needs to. I don't care if it's a Steel type. It also loses the best ability that it could have possibly had being, um, what's it called? That that one ability, uh, Arena Trap. You, you're not trapping anything. It's it's like actually kind of, yeah. Um, you know what? I am going to rank everything in this list. I'm not just going to rank the, the new Pokemon. Why not? Alolan Persian. I'm actually a, an Alolan Persian believer. Um, it is a Pokemon that... Some people don't really understand how it works, but if you played VGC 17, you'll know why Alolan Persian is good. Um, like a typical Alolan Persian set would look like this. It'd be like Jolly, sometimes even Timid, depending if it, if it had like any actual attacking move. 
Um, but it would be like max speed, max HP, and like a little bit of spadef. And you would run like a berry on it. Citrus berry, fur coat is its best ability because it actually becomes really bulky. Um, it's it, Fur coat is like, uh, fur coat is a lot like, how do I say it? It's, it's a lot like huge power, but just for your defense stat. Uh, so rather than this thing having, you know, 80 defense, it's actually 160, which that's comparable with, like, let's look at Cloyster, right? Cloyster has 200 uninvested, so let's go a little bit lower. Tinglu. Yeah, so like, Persian hits 160. Tinglu with like, a little bit of investment hits 160. You hit like that level of like defense. Like that's 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 like a really nice um comparison. Obviously, it's technically I don't know what it is, but yeah, uh, you can you can get bulkier than Tinglu if you like invest into it. But you're mostly gonna want to be speed. Uh, basically, the way that this guy's gonna work is it's gonna always run like taunt fake out. It does have access to parting shot, which is really cool. But you're mainly gonna want to click like foul play. And I think Icy Wind is actually a really important tool for it for like um, speed control. But it does also get a lot of other really nice tools um, like Charm and stuff and Helping Hand. It's it's a very niche Pokemon, but yeah, it, it hits Torkoal Defense. What's, is it Torkoal Defense? Like exactly? Yeah, it's it's Torkoal Defense. You're basically base 140. That's that's a good comparison. So yeah, uh, I think Alolan Persian is going to be like an off meta pick. Oh yeah, Quash is also another move that this thing gets. Arcanine, I actually think that Arcanine is no longer the best in its role, but it's still good. So we're going to put it in B. I don't want to talk about that much, to be honest. I'm not, I'm, for the old Pokemon, I'll just give a brief note, you know. Uh, for Arcanine Hisui, I do think that's cooking. Uh, it's not the worst Pokemon. It does have Intimidate, but honestly, I think that if you're going to use Arcanine Hisui, you're basically throwing if you're not spamming Head Smash with no recoil. It has, you know, Head Smash, Flare Blitz, um, close combat, extreme speed, and honestly, I would actually say that you might be able to get away with like a Choice Scarf over a Choice Band on this, because you want to outspeed things, and it does hit a decent speed tier. So if you were to go Jolly, right? If you were to go Jolly, I think that you just do this. I think you just hit things, man. Clear Amulet's also not that bad. Um, Terra Water is probably its best Terra type. Even Terra Grass isn't bad. But you could also just double down in Terra Rock and just kill things. It's it's like a good it's a good offensive mon. It's not the best though. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's it's whatever. It also gets wild charge, doesn't it? Yeah, it does get wild charge. You can just run like all the recoil moves, bro. Not the best Pokemon though. I do think it's cooking. Uh, Galarian slow, bro. That's going to be cooking. By the way, most of this list is going to be C tier. It's very hard for a Pokemon to be good enough to be B or A in my opinion. Uh, but it's also very hard for it to be D. We're going to see like a, a distribution where it's like a few at the top and then like a ton right in the middle. So yeah, a lot of people always complain. They're like, B and C tier is too full. There's too many Pokemon in it. My brother, that is how, that is how distributions work. Most things fall towards the average. Please learn math. Okay. Um... Galarian slow, slow bro, not like the best Pokemon. Honestly, the fact that it like, it just doesn't have the tools it needs and it's ground weak and like some of the best Pokemon in the game are ground types. Shell Sidearm is interesting, but the best Pokemon is neutral versus it, you know, Fluttermane. So it's just gonna be cooking. I don't think it's like outright don't use territory. Alolan Muck, I actually think is still cooking. I've been using Alolan Muck. Um, it's kind of interesting. It is one of the... You very, very good um, answers to Fluttermane because it is like a super bulky Pokemon with like, I think with an Assault Vest and just max HP, you take like 80% from Terra Fluttermane Moonblast with specs. It's like very bulky, dude. It is an extremely bulky Pokemon on the special side. Um, so yeah, like that's good. You can hit, you can like hit decent attacks, uh, attack tiers Um with this thing at 105, but its main draw is going to be knockoff, poison jab coverage. Um, it also just has some really cool other tools like Shadow Sneak. It has Ice Punch for coverage, Haunt. Toxic is actually a very good set. Yeah, and it can run Ayapapa Gluttony like it used to. Um, Gluttony is going to be one of the, like, the better abilities for the sets that have Protect because it's going to give you that 30% at 50%, meaning that you're going to go up to um, 80% at half so that's very cool curse is another option uh but honestly i think something that is very cool is power of alchemy i've been using power of alchemy to steal like intimidates and stuff from my own pokemon when they go down 
Uh, it's a very interesting Pokemon, but it is just going to be in cooking. Golden Go. I still think Golden Go is going to be an A tier. Uh, Golden Go is not S anymore because um, we just have like a lot of things that counter it. Uh, but it's still just super solid and I don't want to go too in-depth into it. Uh, I actually think that Wo Chen technically got better. Before, I would have actually put Wo Chen in C for like Reg C. But Wo Chen does get better and a lot of people are like, have been like saying, Marcos, what do you mean Wo Chen gets better? Here's a rule about me when I talk about metagames at the beginning. I'm always right in the long run. I was right about Gyarados. I was right about probably something else. That's a sample size of two. 100%. That means it's always true. Math. <laughs> But yeah, so the reason Wo Chen is actually really solid in this format is Wo Chen is actually capable of taking Ursaluna, Terra, Terra Normal, Guts, Boosted, Facade, um, and smacking it with like either a Foul Play or a Leech Seed and stalling it out. But the thing that actually puts it over the top is not only the introduction of a lot more really good special attacking partners like Enamorous, um, like, you know, Thunderous and like all these other great special attackers, but also the existence of the Urshifu forms is actually a very, very big buff to um, Wo Chen. And some less informed players might be thinking, what do you mean the Urshifu forms are good for Wo Chen? He loses to both of them. And one, no, he doesn't. We have Terra. Uh, but two, there are two things in this game that prevent Urshifu from dealing the max damage it wants to do. Uh, technically three, but no one's ever going to skill swap. But um, it's Burn and Tablets of Ruin. Crits do not go through the Ruinous abilities. The fact that Wo Chen can allow a partner Heatran to eat a Surging Strikes is a, ri er, yeah, it is a ridiculous thing. Um, it's also like really solid next to Cresselia. Cresselia Wo Chen is one of the most abominable things I've seen in this format. I know because I run it. Um, yeah, because it gets like Lunar Blessing. You have like Leech Seed Recovery. You have Pollen Puff. Like these things are just a match made in heaven. It's a very, very nice metagame for Wo Chen players. Uh, so yeah. I don't think, and the thing is, like, a lot of people misunderstand that Wo Chen is a hard stall Pokemon. On its own, it does have to stall to win, but it is a, I like to refer to Wo Chen as a walking reflect, or even a walking health pack, or rather crawling, it's a snail, a slithering health pack. Um, do snails slither? Whatever they do. Uh, basically, it is a reflect and a, and a healer. It is a support Pokemon, it's not meant to stall on a team, but it has to stall in an endgame situation. It is a very nice Pokemon to have in this format, so it's gonna be a, a B tier, which I do consider that a slight improvement from last uh, last format. Um, I think Chen Pao is gonna be very stupid. <laughs> it's gonna be very stupid next to the Urshifu forms. That's an A tier, no further explanation needed. Uh, same with Ting Lu. I think Ting Lu is actually really good in uh, this format, basically because it is actually like a really good Cresselia partner. Um, I do have a team I was running a little while back let me see if I can find it. Yeah, I was messing with this team, and I think that Ting Lu, the choice band variant next to Cresselia is actually very good. It's While it does have to compete with Ursa Luna, they don't play exactly the same. In Ting Lu, this spread in particular, 1v1s, or not 1v1s, but in a Trick Room situation, you do beat Ursa Luna, because uh, two Helping Hand and Earthquakes KO the Ursa Luna, while it won't KO you or your partner in Amorous in one hit, uh, because Ting Lu is just that bulky, so... I think it's very good. Also, with all the good special attackers in this format, um, without a doubt, you know, this thing's going to see some usage. So I think Tinglu is just a very good Pokemon. It's going to be another A tier for me. Chi Yu, I actually think might have fallen a little bit, but I don't feel comfortable dropping it lower than A. Um, it is still going to be solid next to all these special attackers. Uh, there's a ton of them in the game that are just outright busted. You know, we have Fluttermane still, but also now it has partners like Regieleki. It has partners like Thunderous, Tornadus. Um, it has a better Tailwind setter than Murkrow, which is a huge improvement in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, just the addition of tools are just incredible. So I don't think that these guys will ever drop below A tier. I was actually somewhat tempted for Wo Chen to be put into A tier, but then no one would take my tier list seriously. Um, but yeah, Roaring Moon, I have not seen since this format began. I think it's still good. It's, it's, it's Roaring Moon. It's never going to be the worst Pokemon ever. I don't want to go too in depth with it but it does have a lot more competition with better fairy types um, being introduced, like Enamorous and stuff. Uh, and yeah, it, and there are just other Pokemon that want to Terra Flying, so I'm going to go ahead and throw them right there in B. Iron Valiant. I actually think that Iron Valiant's going to be cooking tier, to be honest. I don't see what Iron Valiant can do in this metagame. Um, I don't want to go too in-depth because it's not a new Pokemon, but basically Iron Valiant already struggled to have a niche in the previous metagame. 
And with just better speed control Pokemon that don't exactly help Iron Valiant, I just don't see it. I just don't see it uh, going that far. So yeah. Um, the Tauros forms. I'm going to throw both of them into cooking now because Landorus exists. So that is... Yeah, and you're going to go and don't. I think that um, Gyarados is still actually very solid. We do have more electric types, but in the Terra metagame, Gyarados is never going to be that bad. So I'm going to throw him in B. Articuno. <sighs> this one hurts. It's not even cooking. Um, yeah, I don't care that Articuno gets a defense boost in Hail. A lot of people in the comments are going to say like, oh, actually, Snowvale Art Snowcloak Articuno is going to be good. Um, I don't know why I chose that accent for the hypothetical viewer, but let's go with that one. Uh, yeah, it's bulky, but you have to keep in mind, if you want that defense boost, you have to remain an ice type. And while you do lose the times for rock weakness by terraing, Articuno is a terra sinkhole, dude. You are going to terra it if you are going to bring it. I think that the one niche Articuno might have is actually choice specs. That is the only way I can see it getting ran, and it's going to be another blizzard spammer. But here's the issue with that. We have Iron Bundled, who just does it better. He literally just does it better. 124 special attack, 95. He is more physically defensive, I think, but only by... No, he's slightly less physically defensive, but he doesn't require a Terra, and he's faster. Um, it doesn't even get Veil. It doesn't even get Veil, this gen. Yeah, no, this this Pokemon isn't doing anything. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty weak. All right. Uh, Gardakuno. I'm actually going to say B tier. Um, I think that Gardakuno gets better with the existence of Terra. Um, and also, there's like a lot of Intimidate in this format. So, uh, Galarian Articuno, despite having a pretty garbage typing, is actually a very solid Trick Room setter. Um, it also is a Tailwind setter. You can choose either one. Freezing Glare isn't the worst thing, you know? Um, it's like a decent special attack set. It wishes it had Expanding Force in this metagame because it can get rid of that flying typing now. That is very cool. Um, but I, I think that it's actually like a really decent option next to Ursaluna. I know Jamie Boyd was talking about this in his video, so shout out Jamie. But this thing next to Ursaluna is actually pretty cool. Um, it's not the best Pokemon, but or actually, no, you know what? No. Is it cooking? I'm going to put it in cooking, but it is cool. It is cool. It's better than it was before. Um, yeah, it has Helping Hand. It's immune to Earthquakes. So you can actually Helping Hand that Earthquake. And it, uh, it disincentivizes people going for Intimidates versus your Ursaluna because of the ability competitive. So that is very interesting. Uh, Zapdos, that's A tier, automatic A tier. It does have to compete with a bunch of other Electric types now because we have Thunderous and Regieleki in this metagame, but it is still Zapdos and it does have a lot of the tools it needed to be good. Being uh, ground immune is also very decent. But yeah, basically it's Tailwind. It's going to be bulky. Um, Roost is an option in this metagame in my opinion, but yeah, it's just going to be clicking like Tailwind, Thunderbolts, uh, Heat Wave, Protect is an option, Roost is an option. Um, I've even seen some run like Light Screen, which is pretty funny, but it's it's an interesting Pokemon. I think it's going to be the best no matter what. It's very hard to make Zapdos bad when it has access to the moves that it needs to be good. Oh yeah, Hurricane. That's the move. Hurricane, yeah. yeah it's, it's a very good Pokemon. Uh, the only time Zapdos has ever been like actively bad, in my opinion, was BDSP, and that wasn't even an official metagame. Um, I'm actually going to say that Galarian Zapdos is going to be uh, off meta pick. Now, you might be saying, what do you mean? There are so many other Pokemon you could run. All right, hear me out. Galarian Zapdos, and a lot of you guys are going to say Moxie Boosted has lost his mind. Please get off the internet. Um, Galarian Zapdos in, in Series 10 VGC, when we had Dynamax turned off, was actually a good Trick Room Pokemon because it undersped Incineroar and it was able to underspeed certain Amoongus variants, which some Amoongus variants are probably going to run speed to sleep Ursaluna before Trick Room goes up, um, because that'll also prevent Flame Orb for a turn. So that is a threat that you can put onto him. So I actually think that the Power Band ver variant of um, of Galarian Zapdos, actually Power Anklet, because it's, it's more thematically appropriate because he has long legs, um... The Power Anklet Zapdos set is actually still really good because you also have access to like Quick Guard and stuff. It gets to use Brave Bird without fearing the uh, recoil breaking its own sash. Safety Goggles is another option for it. But yeah, no, this set is actually pretty cool. You would run like Protect and then like Stomping Tantrum. Um, yeah, and you at that point, you can actually build it fairly bulky because you just do the zero speed because it actually is slower than 31 speed IV or 31 speed EV Amoongus because Amoongus... Amoongus, um, 
with 30 speed hits 50, where Zapdos with the power anklet actually hits 45. So like I said, if they're non-zero speed, then you're actually going to be underspeeding Amoongus, which is a very solid tool in this metagame. And some of you guys will be saying, what do you mean? This makes no sense. I'm not... I'm not even cooking here. This is a set that saw success in series 10 where we had no Dynamax and Trick Room was one of the best uh, one of the best variants. Now with Ursaluna existing, the power inklet Zapdos is legitimate counterplay to Ursaluna. I'm not even kidding. I'm not even kidding. This is a real set that existed. The the chat literally doesn't believe me. You can you can look into it. This is a real thing. All right. Yeah, it was good in Spike Myth Cup too. All right, uh, Moltres. Uh, it's cooking. It's like the same as Charizard, in my opinion. All right. Um, Galarian Moltres, I actually think is going to be an off meta pick. It, it could be it could be best in its role, but I think with the existence of so many fairy and electric types, Galarian Moltres isn't going to be able to spam its best move as easily um, because it's like scared of everything. Like defensively, Dark Flying isn't the best. Uh, but it is it is in a format where it can actually spam its best move uh, more efficiently. Because what was it? Is it better than Rock Slide? Rock Slide is what accuracy? 90? Um, let me check before someone yells at me. Yeah, 90. So what is 30% of 90 is like a little under... Um, what is 30% of 90? I don't feel like doing math. Sorry, I'm just doing the, the calculation to see if it's technically, you, if you have a better chance of flinching. 0.3 times 90. Okay, so you had a 27% chance to flinch something with Rock Slide, where this is 0.2 of 100. So technically Rock Slide had a better chance to flinch, but this is still like you're not going to miss. Um, so yeah, basically this guy is solid. It does have access to Berserk. It's probably still going to want to run that Citrus Berry nasty plot set but it does also have access like tailwind and stuff it can defensively terra into some pretty decent types i think if you're a dark type you just don't want to get hit by fairy moves and you're already a flying type so you're not going to get targeted by ground moves as often so terra poison isn't that bad uh, you could also go with like terra steel if you're like feeling crazy with it so that is that is really cool yeah and she plus galarian moltres could be pretty interesting so i'm gonna throw him in b i think he's an off meta pick Dragonite, I actually still believe is very good. I'm going to put it in A tier. Um, it's never not going to be bad. Extreme speed, Terra normal, it's busted. It's so good. You're definitely cooking with Typhlosion. And I think you're definitely cooking with Galarian, or uh, Hisuian Typhlosion. Uh, Hisuian Typhlosion does have the one niche of unfake outable eruption. It's the only one in the game with that, if I recall. Um, and at that, if you like Choice Scarf it, you can also Terra Fire pretty effectively because they're not going to want to fake out into the Typhlosion. So if you have like Covert Cloak Tornadus and you Tailwind and you go for like Specs Eruption or something like that, it actually is pretty decent, but I don't think it's going to be the best Pokemon ever. Um, I think that Azumarill is going to remain an off meta pick, but it is very good. Uh, Jumpluff, I think there's too much competition now. I think it's going to go down to cooking. Murkrow is going to go down to cooking. Scizor, I honestly think is cooking. I There's more fire types. Like, we have a lot more fire types, so Scizor is going to struggle a little more. Tyranitar, with the existence of rain, I don't see sand coming back. Um, but it could still exist. I think that, even though I haven't seen it, I, I still believe that it can be a viable um, archetype. And it's still going to be decent, so I don't feel comfortable putting it in cooking. I'm going to keep it in B tier. Pelipper, um... I actually consider Pelipper on Rain to not be necessary, but uh, a valuable tool. So the thing with Rain teams right now, actually, I uploaded a showdown live with this today, but if you're watching the video yesterday um, with this team, and I don't consider Pelipper necessary for this team to function because I think manual Rain outclasses uh, automatic Rain. It's just, it's better. Like, because Pelipper struggles to find like a niche or like a, a safe time to come in onto the field so yeah it's it's just like a weird pokemon but i still consider it good so we're gonna put it off meta Reloom, that's cooking it doesn't do anything sableye you're once again cooking please cook less Horkle, i don't know i think that trick room is very good i think it's gonna remain a because of protosynthesis stuff but i think it's gonna dip for a minute 
Uh, I've seen like Torkoal on a few teams. I haven't seen it on a ton of teams. But uh, yeah, it's going to dip for a second. It's good with like Cresselia Ursaluna, but it isn't like the best Pokemon. So we're going to throw it an A. And I think that we're going to see it come back. I actually consider uh, Bronzong to be quite good in this metagame. It does very decently into Ursaluna because of the Iron Defense set. Um, and the fact that it's uh, immune to ground moves and resists uh, normal moves. So I think you basically have to run the Iron Defense Body Press set. I think it's an off meta pick. Not the best in the game, but like right there. Um, Garchomp, I think that's B tier. Pretty easy to understand. I still think that like Snow is going to be decent. So I'm going to throw him in B tier. All of these guys, you're cooking. Um, I do have an idea for a way to run these guys. But I think that funny enough, Mesprit is the best of the Lake Trio. Because Mesprit has this new move called uh, Mystical Power, which is 70%. It's it's like Torch Song, right? Uh, but it's 70% chance to raise your special attack stat by one. And it's already like a decently bulky Pokemon. So something that you could do is build like a really fat set with like leftovers or like a Citrus Berry or something. And you can like go for Mystical Power, Ice Beam, Protect, and like Baton Pass. And you can just Mystical Power into things. And like just baton pass into a strong special attacker. I don't know what that would be, but if you wanted to run it, you could do that. It also still gets access to like Trick Room and stuff. It's going to be a decent Pokemon. I don't think it's going to be used that often though. Uh, so I'm going to throw it in cooking. Cresselia is arguably the best Pokemon in the game. This thing is ridiculous. And my girlfriend's like favorite Pokemon is Cresselia. So she's like been like, she's been like, Marcos, we have to build a Cresselia team. Let me build a Cresselia team. I'm like, oh, congratulations. It's the best Pokemon. You get to run the best Pokemon. You're going to have a great format. So, Cresselia is an iconic VGC Pokemon. It has never been that bad. Even in, like, Dynamax, people would still try Cresselia and get away with it. Um, but now that Dynamax is gone, Cresselia, despite getting a stat nerf, uh, I believe it's 10 to both of its defenses. It used to be 120 defense, 130 special defense. Um, yeah, it, it is still very good because of the bulk. It is hard to KO. I think that one of Cresselia's best sets is going to be either Citrus Berry or Mental Herb. You're always going to want to run Trick Room. You're always going to want to run some kind of attack. I'm personally a big fan of Dazzling Gleam because Terra Fairy is its best defensive Terra type right now. Um, but as for your last moves, I like Helping Hand. And I've seen some people run Ally Switch. I think if you run Ally Switch, you're stinky and stupid um, because it's a bad move. Even because here's, here's the thing, right? Ally Switch is great in Closed Team Sheet. It's kind of cheap, in my opinion, but it's great in close team sheet. In open team sheet, it's not that good. So you have to deny the team sheet to get uh, to get full value. The last move that I think you're just throwing if you're not running on this thing is Lunar Blessing. Lunar Blessing is jungle healing, but on Cresselia. It's stupid. If you run it next to Ursa Luna, what's going to happen is Ursa Luna gets its health back. Its burn gets healed. So it doesn't take any burn damage at the end of that turn. And then the burn comes back. Because that's just... I, I'm not I'm not, I'm not. not being stupid here, right, chat? The flame orb activates, but you don't take damage until next turn, right? I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Because I'm pretty sure the flame orb activates after the burn would have happened. So, yeah. So the flame orb will reactivate at the end of the turn. I think you bypass the damage. So that is, that is ridiculous. It is the best Pokemon in the game. Samurott, you're cooking. Isui and Samrat, I still think you're cooking, but it could be an off-meta pick. I'm actually going to put it here. I think spikes aren't that bad. Um, but yeah, that, that, it's it's going to be good. You can lay spikes. It's a dark type. It does have knockoff. Uh, it's, a, it's a Pokemon for sure. I think that both of these guys are going to be off-meta picks, but um, Hisui and Lilligant is very good as a, um, as a like sun Pokemon. Victory Dance is ironically as good of a move as it is. Probably not going to get ran on most Hisui and Lilligant's. Because Hisui and Lilligant will want to run um, just other moves. It's going to want to run after you for Torkoal. It wants close combat. It wants Leaf Blade. And it wants Sleep Powder. So it has to drop one of these moves for Protect to get max value. And for the most part, it's probably going to be close combat. Because you still want to be able to deal with the, the water types. So yeah. Actually, does it get Detect? It doesn't. It gets Defog? Hello? <laughs> Why does it get Defog? That's so weird. Solar Blade is also an option. Solar Blade is also an option, but you get more value out of um, out of Leaf Blade for the most part. Yeah. Uh, it is going to be off meta pick. Isui and Zoroark, I consider this to be cooking territory. It could be really fun with like Annihilate, so I'm going to try to make a shutdown live with that. 
Uh, but I do think it's cooking. I don't see it doing anything. Uh, we have Amoongus. I'm going to say Amoongus is meta-defining. It is going to be on, like, a ton of teams. It's, like, pretty necessary to beating the Urshifu forms. And it's, like, the reason that a lot of things are running Terra Grass right now. So, Amoongus, incredible. Um, Hydreigon's definitely, definitely going to be cooking. Volcarona, I think, is an off-meta pick. Volcarona, it tends to be very solid into basically every format, so I don't see a need to go into that. Um, Tornadus and Thunderous. I'm just going to throw both of these guys into meta-defining uh, because they are going to run the game. You have Tailwind, Thunder Wave, everything. It, it has what it needs, right? I, I, don't, I don't know how else to explain it. They also got buffed with Wild Bolt Storm. Actually, let's just throw all the genies in there. Um... Yeah, uh, I, I actually, mm, I kind of want to put Landorus down here because Rain's really good. Yeah, we're going to put both Landorus down there. I think that the other genies are actually better than Landorus right now. But yeah, it's basically just the support tools that they have. As for Landorus, it doesn't like dealing with the Urshifus that often. Um, and the other Landorus also just like, it, it, it gets threatened by a lot. It requires too much support to be amazing in my opinion, but it is very good. Uh, this Tornadus is cooking. It's cooking. This Thunderous is cooking. Actually, this Thunderous could actually be put into off meta now that I think about it. Because you can run Terra Water and it becomes ridiculous. We're going to do that. Um, You're cooking with this guy. You're cooking with this guy. I'm going to be honest. All these guys are cooking. The Kalos starters are about as mid as it gets for VGC. Um, They're not terrible, but you don't have like a lot of options when it comes to running them. Uh, Talonflame is now going to be relegated to an off meta pick in my opinion. It's going to be a worse Tornadus with Will-O-Wisp. And that's going to be how most people are going to look at it from now on. So yeah. Uh, Carbink has one role and it's next to Chansey. So for that reason, I actually want to put it in cooking. Because Chansey will definitely be a thing someone tries. But not a great Pokemon. Um, Hisui and Gudra is interesting. Because the Body Press set is very good. Especially next to Wochen. Despite the fact that like Body Press gets its power decreased by Wochen. I can't help but see it like everywhere. Um, I face this a ton, but yeah, uh, leftovers, uh, acid armor, do not run shelter. It is worse acid armor, um, body press, protect, and life do is a set that I've been seeing quite a bit. Uh, it's pretty decent. I don't think it's the best, but it, it's, it's a good Pokemon and they almost always like run like Terra water. Um, I do think that offensive, it might be a little bit better because I think you can actually pretty feasibly just run like muddy water on this guy and Terra water it's it's a good pokemon uh so he's gonna go into cooking the sui and avalog i don't think it's actually as bad i think it's gonna go into cooking decidueye is cooking the sui and decidueye is cooking it's not that good though yeah most things are in cooking rillaboom i actually consider not to be meta defining but rather um in a tier uh because and by the way these aren't organized within their tiers they're just in the tiers um Rillaboom is not meta defining because I think that there's a ton of answers for it uh, in like the genies and stuff, but it is the only grassy terrain Pokemon and it is a really solid answer to a lot of Terra Water things. It's one of the best Assault Vest users. It has access to Fake Out, U-Turn, Knock Off and all these tools it really needs to be good. It has everything it needs, but it's not broken in my opinion. Without Grassy Glide, it's no longer meta defining. Uh, you are cooking. You are cooking. Hatterene. How do I feel about Hatterene? Hatterene's an interesting one, actually. Um, I think that Hatterene's going to be an off-meta pick. It's like a good offensive Trick Room Pokemon, and I think it might see some usage, but it's probably not as bad as, like, these guys. Um, Grimstarl is going to be an off-meta pick as well. It's not the best in the in the tier, but it is very good. Pinkurchin is cooking, for sure. Um, Indeedy Female, I think, is one of the best Pokemon in the game right now. We're going to throw him there. Um... Here, I, maybe not off meta pick, but like. Off meta, or off meta. There we go, off meta pick. <laughs> there we go, there's a question mark. Cause sometimes these are actually gonna be like good. Like they're gonna be on like certain archetypes. Um. All right. Urshifu's best in its role. This one's meta-defining. Uh, the water Urshifu is incredible. 
Uh, basically, Water Urshifu is able to bypass Protect, and it forces a lot of things to Terra Grass in the same way that Amoongus would. Uh, it also is a good Terra Grass user itself to avoid Rocky Helmet Rage Powder Amoongus. But basically, being able to get rid of its like bad uh, weaknesses, like the Electric type and the uh, in the fairy typing to make it like able to eat those hits uh, makes it so Urshifu is going to be able to stay around a lot longer than it would in other formats and bypassing protect and like intimidate and stuff is just phenomenal it is it is a good 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 Pokemon so we're going to throw him in meta defining Regieleki I actually haven't seen as much as I thought I would but I do find it to be best in its role I think that Regieleki as good as it is after that nerf isn't as powerful as people would believe it was. I think that it's like slowly falling off. If, all right, I'm like, I'm very close to throwing it in the meta defining. It's like, it's on the verge. It's it's like as close to meta defining as that could be without being there. Because I do think that there is like enough counterplay where it's not like the best thing in the game. Um, yeah, I mean, all right. So Regieleki, if you don't know, was nerfed, um, but Regidraco wasn't. Uh, basically... Regieleki's transistor is only 1.3 times, and Regidrago's uh, Dragon's Maw is 1.5 times. So, I think to not make people mad, I'm going to put it meta defining because my hot take is it is not meta defining. That is my hot take. Um, I actually do think Regidrago is good. That is my hot take for the video. <laughs> that is my other hot take. I think Regidrago is good. Um, it has the ability to Terra Steel. It has a lot of really good partners in this metagame. And without Dynamax, it's actually very difficult to switch in on dragons um, to Dragon Energy, which is something that has never really been a thing. Uh, it, there are a lot of good fairy types, don't get me wrong, but they gave Reggie Drago like really, really good uh, coverage, uh, at least in ground moves. Like it needed, it needed the ground coverage because now it can hit fairies for neutral and it can hit steel types for super effective. So I do think that that, that buff makes Regidrago like an off meta, but good pick. Um, this one's very underrated right now. I think that Glacier is going to pick up down the road at, on like Trick Room teams, but it is very good. Um, Spectrier is cooking now, unfortunately. Weird Ear is cooking now, unfortunately. Cleaver is cooking. I'm sorry. It's not... It's not as easy to use as people would think it is. It might be an off meta pick, but it's it's very difficult to get those rocks up. And right now where the metagame is, it's going to have to like, it's going to have to um, find a niche as the metagame changes. It's right off the bat. It's not, it's not there. You are meta defining the bear. Freddy fast bear. Five, five turns at trick room, Freddy. He is one of the most insane wall breakers in the game and he is the reason that urshifu rapid strike is essential dude being able to spam rapid strike or close combat or not rapid strike um surging strikes or close combat into this thing through protect is like essential to beating it dude it is it is very very good it is very hard to deal with and it pairs well with like all of these pokemon um i actually find basculation to be pretty good i i recorded a video with it today it's really fun next to a uh, covert cloak thunderous because it's like hey screw you i'm hitting you this turn i don't care if you have fake out i'm a ghost type i'm gonna tear a water in front of you even though you could have faked me out you're not gonna and i'm gonna hit you with like a very strong wave crash uh and it is it is decent it's it's a really good pokemon it also has last respect so um end game sweeps are very doable so it's, it's a good pokemon uh this one's gonna be cooking though the special attacking variant isn't like amazing um, because you have to land hydro pumps, and that's that's the issue. I think Sneezer is decent. It's a stupid Pokemon. There was someone in my comment section the other day who was like, "You only call it stupid because you don't have to deal with it, and and or you don't know how to deal with it." And they don't realize that when I say something stupid, that's good. If a Pokemon's stupid, that is a good thing, guys. You don't understand how Pokemon works. Scald is a stupid move. It burns you 30% of the time. Dire Claw is an even stupider move. Because 50% of the time, you're either going to get poisoned, para paralyzed, or slept. There has never been an attacking move that could sleep you randomly, bro. This is a stupid Pokemon. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I think that um, Overquill is cooking, to be honest. It's not amazing, but it is a decent Intimidator. Um, I think that Enamorous, both Enamorous forms are actually some of the best Pokemon in the game. Uh, and I think that it's going to take a minute for people to recognize that. But yeah, all the genies are top tier. Contrary and Amorous is good next to like Thunderous as well as like the superpower spam one. So that is very decent. 
Uh, and yeah, it is it is a good, good Pokemon. Uh, the other variant, while it is difficult to get legitimately in game because of the fact that, you know, you only get one per playthrough of Pokemon Legends Arceus and you can't exactly reset and check for IVs in that game, it's decent. Um, I think that under Trick Room, it's like a very difficult Pokemon to deal with because of that overcoat making it immune to everything Amoongus wants to do to it. It's, it's very good. Uh, Mouse Hold is now going to be relegated to an off meta pick. I think that Mouse Ape is going to be dead for the most part, but it is the only friend guard Pokemon that's viable in this game. So we're going to throw him there. Uh, Garganical is going to be another off meta pick. I still find it to be very good. It has to run a good Terra type though. It is It has become a Terra sink in my opinion. Um, I think that Armor Rouge still has a niche because of Expanding Force, but it is more difficult to play. Sarah Ledge, I actually think might drop to Cooking but I'm gonna keep it here. I think it's like still like a good Pokemon despite all of these Pokemon entering the game. Um, it can Terra Grass to deal with this guy and with bulk up, it doesn't really mind it too much. It can like Bitter Blade it and it'll like get some health back. So that's decent. Um, Palafin, I actually think is back up there. So I was a Palafin hater in the previous format, but now Palafin does have the niche of you're under Trick Room and you need to KO the bear now. So I do think it is good. Um, I think it's going to fall off for a second and then it'll pick up at the end. Unlike what happened in um, the Regulation C tournaments where it was really good at the beginning and fell off at the end. It's going to do the opposite. Glamora is going to remain decent. It's going to be a B tier. It's hard to fit on a lot of archetypes, but I do think that um, we have a lot more tools that allow us to um, to play slower. People think that like this is going to be the hyper offense format. No, nah, I disagree. It is going to be the slowest format yet, and I love that um, because the games are going to be a lot more... They're slower paced, but they're not going to be stall focused. And I think that in a slower format, you get more value out of your Glamora. Because even in hyper offense, Glamora could slow down the game um, and benefit from that. Uh, I think that Dondozo is still going to be an off meta pick. I don't think it's going to be A tier like it used to be. Um, but because, you know, these guys exist as like a duo, they're going to be off meta. Uh, Annihilate is probably going to remain okay. I don't see it doing anything too good. Uh, this thing's still good. I actually think King Gambit's still like phenomenal. Um, it's like, it's it, it it always makes up for its weaknesses with Terra and being like an anti-intimidate mon with access to Sucker Punch is just incredible. I actually think that with the existence of Lando, um, Great Tusk falls to off meta pick, but it's not bad. Screamtail is going to remain off meta. This guy is going to be off meta. Fluttermane is going to be best in its role. Fluttermane is still a phenomenal Pokemon. It's not like as good as it was before, but it like if it was like a, an 11 before, it's now a 9. On a scale of 10, Fluttermane was an 11. Now it's a 9. That's the good way to put it. Slitherwing, you're cooking. I'm sorry. As a Slitherwing believer, you're cooking. Uh, same with Sandy Shocks. Same with Iron Treads. I think that... Um, I think that the same thing happened with Iron Bundle. If Iron Bundle was a 10, it is now an 8. But an 8 is still good enough to be A tier, in my opinion. So we're going to throw him there. Iron Hands, phenomenal Pokemon. Honestly, close to putting it into Meta Defining because it is very, very good. I'm actually really tempted to throw it into Meta Defining. You know what? That's another hot take for me. I put Iron Hands over both of these guys. All right. You're cooking with him. Cooking. Cooking. Off Meta Pick. And we're going to throw Heatran in here. Because Heatran isn't as good as all these guys, but it's very good. It is a very good Pokemon. So, yeah, A tier. That's going to be my tier list. I actually don't think I have any edits to make. Um, Let me see if there's anything in B tier that should be an A tier. Uh, Well, obviously, Wo Chen, but we're not going to throw him there. Uh, No, I think I, I think I stand by everything here. Is there anything that could drop down from A? Not really. Yeah, uh, I think this is. Yeah. All right. Um, right. Let's let's do a let's do a poll in chat. One, if you think it's a good list. Two, if you think it has like some pretty huge flaws. Only if it's huge flaws. One in chat if it's a good list. Two, if there's huge flaws in it. Three, thank you. 1.5, three, you're cooking. <laughs> All right, it looks like it looks like for the most part, people agree with the list. So yeah, um, that's going to be it for, you know, the tier list video. Uh, let me know what you guys think if you're watching on YouTube in the comment section down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe. Turn notifications. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.